The story of McDonald's isn't just one of success, but of crazy court cases, nutritional controversies, outright lies, labor atrocities, and PR disasters. No company as big as McDonald's can survive for long without attracting a scandal, and these are some of the worst they've ever faced. Liebeck v. McDonald's is one of America's most infamous court cases. The story itself is well known. In 1992, a woman named Stella Liebeck was severely burned after spilling a cup of McDonald's coffee on herself. Liebeck filed a lawsuit against the company, and the case became a legendary example of the, quote, frivolous lawsuit. Unsurprisingly, shows like Seinfeld took great delight in mocking the case. Yeah, I'm gonna be rich. <laughs> Why are they settling? Because they're afraid of bad publicity. All this because you spilled coffee on yourself? Yeah, that's right. The truth, however, is much darker. Liebeck suffered third-degree burns across 16% of her body and needed to be hospitalized for eight days. McDonald's initially offered Liebeck a mere $800 for her trouble. When she refused, the resulting court case revealed McDonald's had been receiving complaints about the extreme heat of their coffee. Liebeck and McDonald's ultimately settled for an undisclosed amount. I got my egg McMuffin. That's gonna be the first thing right there. Supersize Me was a film that may have changed the world. Produced by and starring Morgan Spurlock, the documentary charted the consequences of eating nothing but McDonald's food for a whole month. Spurlock wound up gaining 18 pounds, suffered increased cholesterol, became depressed, and generally ended up looking a little bit like Grimace. How do you do it? What's your secret? The film's release was something of a disaster for the public perception of McDonald's. It opened up a topic of conversation that portrayed the company as a specifically negative force in society. And now a startling ABC News investigation. Back in 2012, the pink slime incident rocked the world, courtesy of ABC News. The news program ran video footage of gross, pink-tinted slime being produced at a food processing plant, revealing that what the fast food chains euphemistically called lean, finely textured beef was present throughout the industry, McDonald's included. McDonald's promised to stop using the bizarre beef additive, even though the FDA declared it totally safe. Three plants were closed, hundreds of jobs were lost, and the company that had been producing the stuff lost one point $9 billion in business. I it's the Monopoly game, only at McDonald's. The McDonald's Monopoly tie-in is one of the company's most successful marketing schemes. First launched in 1987, the game was simple. You collect pieces of the board by ordering meals at McDonald's. The game Monopoly has come to life at McDonald's. If you get enough of the right ones, you can win prizes, including a potential $1 million payout. 100 million prizes. That's more prizes than all the Scottish Terriers in the U.S. It's a great idea, and it must have made the company a ton of money. It's just too bad somebody rigged it. An ex-cop named Jerome Jacobson worked at the company that printed the game pieces. He came up with the idea to provide people with winning pieces in exchange for a cut of their prizes. He got away with it for a whole 12 years, defrauding McDonald's for $24 million in the process. McDonald's wasn't blamed for Jacobson's scam, but when the truth came to light through an FBI tip, the company gave away $10 million to 55 random customers as a way of saving face. In 2014, McDonald's workers around the world joined the picket line in protest against the company's low wages. Named Fight for 15 after the hourly wage that employees were hoping to win, the protests saw strikes take place in 150 cities across America and 33 countries around the world. The strikes represented a form of mass solidarity between low-level workers all over the planet, the likes of which has rarely been seen in the history of industrial action. And every one of them were united by a single common enemy, McDonald's. Suffice to say, this was not a good look. Also not a good look? When former McDonald's CEO Ed Renzi discussed the protests with Fox News. They're a bunch of socialist, fascist hypocrites as far as I'm concerned. Well, I think that's the soundbite of the day, Ed Renzi. 